Hey, what's up guys? Mario back again with another trade video. Today I'm going to go over three day trades that I did make today. Uh, and I'm going to talk about them specifically uh, because there are some nuances in those trades. Now, one of them is a zoom on a first red day gap fill. Uh, the trade's a little bit different than a regular first red day. And I'm going to explain that in this video. The second one was a actual regular first red day on Airbnb stock. And I'm gonna kind of talk about both the ZM and the Zoom and the, the Airbnb uh, first red day stocks and the differences. And I'm also gonna go over a uh, long, low hanging fruit long on Virgin Galactic. And there's a couple of other stocks that I was also looking for in terms of a low hanging fruit uh, long. And I'm gonna kind of go over and, and kind, of, kind of go over the differences. So you guys hopefully understand why some trades work and some trades do not work. Actually, also even on the first red day, because I was actually looking at other first red day short stocks for today. So I'm going to kind of go over those uh, for you guys. Hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions, again, ask them down below in the YouTube comments, guys. Uh, I will appreciate the support. Uh, it does help support the channel. And also, hey, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe uh, to the channel down below. Uh, so, hey, let me share my screen and let's get started. Okay. All right, so let's get started. First of all, I want to kind of talk about the uh, Zoom uh, first red day gap fill, and then I will go over uh, the other stocks. So why Zoom? Um, Zoom has been on a, a downtrend for uh, the last, literally since uh, October of last year, uh, and the downtrend is, is obvious right here. It's, it hasn't really done much since then. A lot of it has to do because of the... Um, the uh, vaccine, the COVID vaccine, as you guys remember, when the vaccine, uh, when actually before the vaccine, when uh, the pandemic first started, uh, that's when Zoom started to take off, you know, because a lot of people started working from home and they started to kind of use Zoom and it took off, you know, but since the vaccine was announced, it literally, long-term investors started selling the stock because there could have been, there was, of course, there's a possibility the market could reopen uh, and things like that. So I actually personally uh, went long on Zoom in my long-term account. Once it actually, uh, you know, tested this 350 and actually filled a gap here. Um, and also it actually, um, it started to kind of almost test the 200-day uh, moving average. Again, this was done actually pre-market. Uh, just to kind of show you guys that in the pre-market. It was done on this day right here on the 12th, and it happened pre-market. So when it, when it comes to pre-market, it's very, very important to look at pre-market because that's where the big institutional investors buy. They want to get those really, really good levels, and they buy pre-market. They buy whenever they can, uh, especially pre-market. So those levels are very, very important. So uh, after that dip buy, Zoom just literally went, you know, one, two, three, three days in a row up. Uh, and the fourth day I had a gap up and this is the reason why I was interested. So I was interested in a short, uh, and again, even though I am a long-term investor in zoom, um, I also like to day trade the stocks that I own in my portfolio, uh, especially when there's a high probability trade. So there was a high probability trade for first red day on a gap fill. And there are differences between first red day and a gap fill be versus a regular first red day. And I'm gonna compare this stock versus Airbnb stock and a first red day so you guys can see the differences. So this first red day gap fill was based on a bounce. Again, the bounce off the lows from, from this uh, downtrend. So there's one, two, three. And in the fourth one, uh, it, it started, it, it tested this 400 level that was very, very important on the daily chart. A very, very important resistance on the daily chart. Uh, you guys can see these are the, my, uh, my daily lines. And not only that, but there's also the 50 day moving average on top of it also acting as a resistance. Um, so what really made me interested on shorting the stock was actually the gap. There was a gap up, you know, after three days in a row up, there was a pretty huge gap straight to 400. And that's the reason why I uh, pretty much was looking too short. Because if you think about it, for the long-term investors that bought here on this dip, uh, their, their target to sell is actually 400. You know, it's a very, very good target to sell some, some shares and take some profits. And that's, again, what exactly saw. 
you know, couple that with the market selling. I mean, there were, the market was also selling too. Uh, the NASDAQ, this is the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ, it was just everything aligned together very, very well. Uh, but again, main, main reason why I was interested was because this, uh, of this uh, gap straight to 400. So there was room, there was room to kind of fill that gap. Again, pre-market, you know, there was, you know, uh, it literally gapped up and it started hitting 400. So there was room to hit the, the gap, you know, back to the uh, previous close around 380s. Uh, so my, my thesis was like, okay, so it hit already 400. I could see a lot of uh, long-term investors taking, uh, taking profits here at 400 off from the dip. And I could see this breaking down uh, to new lows. So if it breaks down this low, this uh, 390, I'm going to be short. And that's pretty much what it did. It broke down um, and I actually got lucky on this pullback, quick pullback to 392, shorted. And my goal was actually to cover here on the gap bill at uh, previous close around 380s, uh, but it decided to kind of uh, bounce off this level. When I saw two green candles right here in the daily, I decided to cut it off and I was done with that trade. Now, eventually it did hit uh, the, uh, it did fill the gap, you know, um, but this was not after the, the, the second move. So there was an opportunity to short here based on pre-market levels right here. This is pre-market level right here at 395. I didn't take the trade, but there was definitely another trade opportunity here to short here. Again, um, you know, risking off the short in here, risking off the high day, or even 400 actually, you know, because that's really the main level. Um, you know, here risking off 400 and to fill the gap here at 380. So that's another trade that could have happened here. Again, I didn't take it uh, because I took my trade here already, and I was pretty much good with it. And I was also busy with other trades, which I'll talk about in a second. But again, it did fill a gap. So again, this is a first rate red day gap fill type of trade, okay? Uh, and look at that, it's beautiful. It filled the gap right here, straight down. Again, huge gap up after one, two, three, uh, huge gap up at the, uh, the open. Uh, so it filled, a gap, it filled a gap on a sell off. So again, first red day gap fill. So that's uh, the first trade. Now let's compare that to Airbnb because I actually did trade Airbnb on a first red day but there's a little bit difference. There's a difference. So here's Airbnb on a first red day. So it had a huge move and actually another one happened here on this day. Uh, let me kind of see what day was this. Uh, give me one second. This was on the, this happened on, in the 22nd. So there's another first red day here, you know, after all these moves, but look at this after one, two, three, three big moves on the outside again, uh, there's an opportunity for the first rate. Now, the difference between Airbnb's first red day and the reason why it's not a gap fill uh, and more of a regular first red day is because it's it's breaking out of the highs, all-time highs. There's no upward resistance at the top. There's no resistance at the top. Uh, so there's a difference, huge, huge difference. Um, and, and also there's an opportunity to sell even more for a bigger downside move. So because if you if you really think about it here, uh, not only there was other a gap up, but it actually filled a gap here on this early gap up to previous close here at 180, 50, but it actually went down straight to uh, S2. And that's pretty much the difference between a first red day gap fill versus a first red day, um, you know, sell off. One, one of them has no resistance at the top and it could sell off even more. And the other one uh, has resistance in the top. Let me show you zoom has resistance in the top, and it usually only fills a gap to the previous close. You know, and you guys can see, if you guys can see right now, if you just fill the gap, and once it fills the gap, it started to bounce. So the main target is here, the gap. Uh, once it fills it, you're done. But versus Airbnb and other first red days uh, who are breaking out at all-time highs, not only could it fill a gap, but there's more opportunity for self. So, I was thinking about shorting here at um, Airbnb once it broke, um, well, it, it, it broke up pre-market levels, it topped out at pre-market highs. And my thought process, okay, if this breaks previous close, which is 180.50, this is gonna really sell off. And that's pretty much what it did. Now, unfortunately, I did not catch the sell. I was too slow to get in. I was looking at too many stocks, to be honest. Uh, so I had no entry uh, on break of 180.50 previous close to catch the move. So it was literally, I was literally like uh, maybe 30 seconds late. But the thing is, once these stocks break, they just tend to break really fast. So, you know, you don't want to chase because if you chase, 
you end up losing. Chase, losers chase, you know, so you don't want to do that. So my thought process, okay, so we're selling off, broke, it went red already. Hopefully we get a bounce to previous close and I get short or even the, the value weight of average price and I could get short, but it did it. It literally just kept selling, uh, kept selling, kept selling. And again, this is the difference between a first red day versus a first red day gap fill. Now I knew it pretty much it's just kept selling. So the only other opportunity that I had really to trade this in a high probability trade was the S2 bounce right here. And that's pretty much what I did. So I traded the S2 bounce pivot level right here at 168.52 and I took off my profits around 172 and that was it, you know? So, and that's one of the things that I kind of want to mention really quickly, guys. If you are looking at first red day type of shorts and you miss the short, you're like, oh no, I missed my entry to get short. Don't worry. If there is a true first red day, it usually goes to the S2 level, S2 level pivot. And that's where you can play a high probability bounce off the S2 pivot level. All right, guys. So always remember, remember that uh, first red day, there's usually two trades, if not more, sometimes even three trade opportunities on your first red day. Uh, as you guys saw on Zoom, there was actually two trades on Zoom you could have got in. You could have got in the first brick of lows, and you could have got in once it pulled back all the way to the pre-market levels and short again to fill the gap. So usually in first red days, there's two opportunities to trade, two high probability opportunities to trade. Uh, that's the reason why I like them. And actually, if you really think about the gap fill, you could have also gone long on the gap fill, on the previous close, on the on Zoom, on the first red day gap fill. So that could have been also long, actually. And let me show you that the screen. And actually, I just thought about that right now. I don't know why I didn't think about that before, but it actually is also a high probability trade for a bounce. Once it fills a gap on these type of trades, you could actually buy that gap, kind of like an S2 bounce, but instead of an S2 bounce, you literally buy the gap fill because the gap fill um, and you can see it just literally kept trending. So this could have been actually another good trade here for me uh, to go along here at the gap fill. Uh, but I didn't take that trade, you know? So if you think about it, there, there was actually three trades here in Zoom. Uh, there was a first short on brick of uh, low a day of lows, you know, cover probably here. It, it, it would have been awesome if it would have gone straight here. But once it pulled back, again, you could have shorted here on a pullback to pre-market levels. Again, pre-market lows right here, short here, risking off 400, and again, for the gap fill. Uh, and then once it fills the gap, boom, you could buy that dip, you know, for, some, for a similar trade, kind of like an S2 bounce, you know? Because again, these type of trades, once it fills the gap, you know, they start to reverse. And that's pretty much what happened here at, at Zoom. Once it fills the gap, it starts to reserve, reverse. Um, so that's pretty much what, well, actually, I, I still have a lot, a lot of things that I, that I kind of want to cover. Um, and I'm going to cover other, uh, first red day setups that I was looking at today, but I did not trade. And I want to kind of cover the differences, uh, between both. Cause I was actually looking at BBBY for a first red day. You can see, and again, this is the reason why, cause it's overextended on the daily, huge moves. Again, uh, if you look at the the Bollinger Bands, you know, definitely trading above the Bollinger Bands. And I was also looking at Wayfair. Again, huge moves. Uh, and actually there was a pretty decent red day today on Wayfair. Um, but I'm gonna kind of discuss why I didn't short this trades and I did ended up shorting Airbnb stock or actually trading Airbnb stock first red day and also Zoom first red day. Um, for one, the main difference between uh, Wayfair and uh, BBBY, which is uh, Bath, Body, and Beyond, was the float. And I'm going to show you guys really quick. Okay. The float. So let me kind of just share you the difference between, especially Airbnb, Airbnb float versus, uh, let's say, BBBY. So look at the float. One, I mean, the, 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 the uh, short float, excuse me, not the, just the float, but the short float. There was only 1.66% of the float is short. So there's not a lot of short sellers. So that's telling me that, hey, there's a lot of long, there's a lot of back holders and they're itching to sell, especially with the last, you know, couple of days of moves. These back holders, hey, as soon as it goes red, they're going to sell off. And that causes a huge trickle down sell off on the stock. So that was the number one reason. So look at Airbnb, low short float and not only Airbnb, but also Zoom. Look at Zoom. Zoom, 5% short float. Again, a lot of backholders. 
And I can see that because the majority of the short sellers probably already covered. You know, if you look at the, the daily chart, whoever started shorting um, a Zoom after the uh, vaccine news, um, you know, they were probably thinking, hey, I'm going to short this until this gap fills or until it starts setting the 200 moving average, which if you look at the, the chart, again, the 200 out moving average was tested, you know, pre-market. So whoever was short, they probably already cover on the area, especially 352. So it kind of made sense. So low shorts, so definitely, uh, you know, not a lot of uh, shorts, you know, so that's the reason why this gap fill worked. Uh, but if you compare that now, let's compare that to uh, Bath Body and Beyond, another uh, first red day, at least, you know, extend the shorts. Let's compare the short flow. Look at that, 62% short flow. That means that there are a whole bunch of shorts, uh, not only stuck, you know, stuck. They're, they're upside down in the position, most likely. Uh, if you really start thinking about it, that's literally what created this squeeze right here. You know, you got one, two, three, four days. According to the, uh, let me see, the short ratio, you know, it's going to take around eight days to cover all these shorts, you know. And again, and for when short sellers cover, they buy. They keep buying, buying, buying to get out of the short. So that's the reason why you didn't see that huge sell-off. Now, it's only down 3%. My preferred down day for a first red day is down is, is stock when it's down like 10%, 5% or 10, 5, 5% or more, you know, close to 10%. If you look at Airbnb, that was pretty much down like, you know, like over 5% at the lows when it hit S2. Uh, so that was pretty much it. Now, sometimes these stocks do sell off, but, you know, even though it did, did sell off, it didn't have that big, huge move. Uh, like you saw on Airbnb or that easy trade like you saw on Airbnb. It kind of bounced off this 25 level. And honestly, the best way to trade those is if uh, if you, you know, did buy S2 bounce. So if these stocks for whatever reason actually do end up selling off, you want to actually buy the S2 bounce. That is the easier trade. Now let's look at Wayfair. Wayfair, another one. Another one that actually, and actually really like Wayfair a lot because it had a blow off candle here at uh, the day before. This is a blow off top. This is a blow off top candle. Uh, but and it, my, my thought process was to kind of short on, on a, on a push to like a midpoint or even 340, but we didn't get that. It kind of just literally started selling off. Uh, even though there was an opportunity to kind of short, it didn't really sell off I wanted and the volume was really, really weak. So I didn't really like it at all. But look at the short flow, 18.88% flow. You know what I mean? So that's, that's pretty high. You know, and like I said, the reason why this, these stocks sometimes tend to bounce like that is because a lot of short sellers, sellers are covering, they're short and they're covering in order for them to cover, they have to buy. So if you think about it, short sellers are the natural uh, buyers of a stock, you know, something that I, one of the, the mentors that I follow said, said before, short sellers are the not, natural buyers of a stock and the opposite, long buyers are the natural sellers of a stock. You know what I mean? So when you have too many short stock in a stock, you know, they're gonna keep buying it up. And the opposite, when you have too many longs stuck in a stock, they're gonna sell it at the moment's notice, you know? So it's kind of interesting how that works. So I kind of wanted to mention that because that's very, very important. And hopefully that helps with your trading, guys. Uh, but as you guys can see, Wayfair, again, one of the main reasons I also didn't have short it because the volume was very, very low. In the first half hour of the trading day, uh, we had a very, very low volume. Uh, let me see. I think it only, here it is. Uh, by the, so we didn't have... You know, especially the open, we had like less than half a million shares uh, traded uh, during the first half an hour. Um, actually, this is a 15 minute chart. So there you go. Yep, there you go. So actually barely, uh, so I barely caught on to like a half a million shares up to the first half hour. So it was another reason why I didn't short because I used to like to short the, the, the open like the first 10, 15 minutes. Um, and it, let me actually go to the 15 minute chart. That kind of makes more, especially when I'm shorting on, at the, at the open. So you can see the first 15 minutes, it was less than half a million shares, uh, traded. So I do not like to trade those type of stocks when that type of low volume, 
because uh, it's kind of hard to predict what they could do. It could squeeze you out, you know, especially short and you get squeezed, especially with an 18% short float. I don't want to be part of this. So that's the reason why I didn't short that, um, you know, because it was a low volume. But as you guys can see, um, Wayfair, um, it didn't really get a chance to sell off to S2. Um, so that's the reason why I, I, I definitely did not want to get short. First of all, there's not a lot of volume. And two, there was a lot of short, there's a high short interest. And the only way that I was going to play this is if it goes to S2, I'm going to buy that dip bounce for a bounce. And that was it. That was the only way I was going to play wafer because there was not enough volume at the open for me to be interested. I definitely do not want to get stuck and get squeezed out, especially with an 18% short float. Now it is down over 5%, which is really, really nice, but the volume, I did not like it with the, with the volume and high short interest. Uh, I was not a fan of that. Okay guys. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Now let's kind of take a look at another stocks that I was looking at and done with these uh, first red days. Kind of wanted to just kind of cover the differences so you guys can kind of see the differences uh, because you tend to see a lot of these, these charts nowadays with all this volume coming in from the market, uh, liquidity in the market. Uh, but again, not every single of these spikes, it's gonna be a good short. So you just gotta always keep that in mind, okay? Sometimes there's other easier plays. And in this case, Zoom was an easier short play and also uh, Airbnb was the easier short play. Not an easy short play, but also an easy bounce right here on the S2. Um, all right, guys, so let's go over uh, Virgin Galactic. Um, again, I was interested in Virgin Galactic for a low hanging fruit long. I was also looking at uh, DDDD, or uh, let me see what their name is. I think it's uh, printing, something like that. Uh, let me see what their name is. And DD, 3D Systems Corporation, they're a 3D printer. So, I, you know, the stock has pretty much been a tear. There was a really nice um, uh, pivot bounce here uh, on, on the 1 8th. I did not catch that. A lot of the traders that I, that I traded with did catch it. So that's what I was looking for. You know, I was looking for another, another of those bounces. Now, let me, let me look at the uh, pivots. There you go. These, I like these pivots. So if you guys see, here is that bounce right here. And let me uh, put a 10-day time frame. That's easier to see. So this was uh, on the 7th, the first, the first huge move. And there was a nice pivot bounce. And on a midpoint. And that's literally what I was looking for today. Um, interesting enough, it, it didn't work how I wanted to. Uh, there was a, a downgrade from JP Morgan. I hate when uh, institutional investors try to butt in through my day trades because they end up screwing it up. Uh, you know, there was a downgrade from JP Morgan, a tier one bank. So the stock started selling uh, pre market, but there was this huge squeeze once it broke the midpoint. And that would have been a nice trade on it. Uh, you could say an RB type of trade or RB or opening range breakout. I didn't take it. Um, I honestly wanted to kind of uh, look for a, um, a uh, S1 bounce. I usually like to buy when it's on a washouts, like when it sells off, like morning panics and buy those bounces versus buying opening range breakout. That is just me as a day trader, uh, but it could have worked. But the thing is, this, this trade kind of messed me up uh, psychologically because then I got a little bit of FOMO on space. <laughs> so on, on, on this stock, on Virgin Galactic. So I saw that move. And again, my original, uh, again, for, for uh, Virgin Galactic, again, huge move, second day continuation, continuation on the long side. So that was what I was looking for. But um, you know, it, again, it started to trade below the midpoint. That's usually where I would like to get in. If it's trading below the midpoint, um, I like to look at the next uh, levels, the outer lines, which is S1 pivot. But it started to kind of consolidate. And I was thinking to myself, hey, there is a possibility that space may do an opening range breakout similar to what DD did, you know? Um, the only difference between uh, DD D and um, um, Virgin Galactic is that it did it within the first 15 minutes. Opening range breakouts happen usually within the first 15, 15 to 30 minutes uh, versus uh, Virgin Galactic, you know, um, 
hey, it could have actually happened versus the 15, 30 minutes. It could have, it could have actually happened. But again, I got FOMO because I missed 3D systems. I missed DDD on that open range breakout. And the other thing that convinced me, to be honest, to buy on that, on that break of uh, midpoint was how uh, Virgin Galactic reacted on the day before. Because <clears throat> it was not a smooth move, guys. It was definitely not a smooth move yesterday in terms of price action. But I like the fact that it had this you know, W pattern and it had a huge move on the second test. So that's what I was expecting. And actually, this is the main reason why I decided to buy that. Um, it, you know, and my thought probably, okay, I really like how this is a possibility. There could be an open range breakout. It breaks, um, you know, the, uh, the midpoint on the second try and it kind of like a W pattern. If worst case scenario doesn't work, I'm going to stop out below VWAP. And that's pretty much what happened, unfortunately. So uh, again, my original plan was to buy on the S1, which I did. I bought this dip and I was you know, hoping for that you know, bounce. Uh, it continued to sell. And, and again, it was getting close to zombie hours, which is 9.30. I don't like to be any trades, especially on a low hanging fruit after 9.30. And I already had one sell out, I already won loss. I didn't want to have like, because usually what I like to do on these trades, um, I like to uh, buy the, the, uh, an important uh, intraday level even if it continues to sell off to kind of add there, because I am risking between uh, the two S1 and the S2 pivot levels. So I do like to buy those, but after I have this loss, you know, I don't want to continue to have more loss in case this, this one third is 30 levels in hold and it continues to sell. I definitely did not want to, you know, lose more than I wanted to. Uh, so that's really what happened because unfortunately it actually worked. The 30 area bounced off. And if actually, if I would have not bought this, I, if I would have just followed my systematic process and not get FOMO again, <laughs> I got FOMO again, and, and, and kind of, you know, stay away from my systematic process. If I would have just stuck with my systematic process, I would actually won on this trade. But again, 3D systems, it, it, it messed me up psychologically because they have that opening rage. And I was like, dude, I think, you know, Virgin Galactic can do the same move, you know? Uh, and again, FOMO got me, got the better of me. And what could have been a win if I would have just followed my process ended up being a losing trade. So that, go figure, guys. So again, um, just to mention, guys, I cannot stress enough of how important it is to follow a systematic approach once you start changing your system that already works, especially if you have already back tested, which I've had, I have back tested the system and it works, you're going to lose money. You're not going to become a consistent trader. Fortunately, I did end up green because I had a green trade on, on Zoom stock and also on Airbnb stock. If it wasn't for those two trades, I would have been red in a day, but I was green. So I'm happy about that, but I'm not happy that I, that I did not follow my process that I, I once again geared away from my process. And again, a lot of it had to do with FOMO and a lot of it has to do with what other stocks are doing. And you're like, oh, well, it, it broke out. DDD broke out on an open range breakout. Uh, once it broke uh, midpoint, oh, maybe that can happen with, with, uh, with, with space. You start making stuff in your head that is not true, that is, hasn't been back tested. Because even though um, DDD did break on an open range, um, I haven't really back tested. I haven't really seen anything in my data that say that, hey, this is going to happen nine out of 10 times. To me, it looks like this is my only happen like one out of 10 times. So again, guys, hope you guys learned from this video. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. You guys will hear from me soon. Take care, guys.